hear the word of God. There is a season for everything and a time for every matter under the heavens. A time for giving birth and a time for dying. A time for planting and a time for uprooting what was planted. A time for killing and a time for healing. A time for tearing down and a time for building up. A time for crying and a time for laughing. A time for mourning and a time for dancing. A time for throwing stones and a time for gathering stones. A time for embracing and a time to avo for avoiding embraces. A time for searching and a time for losing. A time for keeping and a time for throwing away. A time for tearing and a time for repairing. A time for keeping silent and a time for speaking. A time for loving and a time for hating. A time for war and a time for peace. Let us pray. Come, Holy Ghost. Our souls inspire and lighten us with your celestial fire. For if you are with us, then nothing else matters. And if you are not with us, then nothing else matters. Be with us, we pray. In the name of your beloved. Amen. This is the third in our series of four sermons about each of the Toy Story movies and the life lessons we see in each of these movies. This week we will look at Toy Story 3 and its messages about change. Life in Andy's household is changing. Andy is the child we met in the first Toy Story movie and he was a young child and now he's all grown up and he's going off to college. He hasn't played with his toys in years, and most of the toys he began with in the first Toy Story movie have all gone. Just a few toys remain, including Woody, the cowboy Buzz Lightyear, Jesse, Bullseye, Mr. and Mrs. Potato Head, and a half a dozen others. Andy int intends to take his beloved toy, Woody, to college with him. But the rest of them are going in the attic. And so he puts all of the rest of the toys in a bag and puts it outside his room. Unfortunately, it's a garbage bag, and his mother takes it to the trash. The toys narrowly escape being taken by the garbage truck and jump into a donation box that is also coming from this household and going to the neighboring Sunnyside daycare. Woody in his attempt to save the other toys, ends up jumping in the donation box with them. The toys conclude that because they were about to go in the garbage, Andy no longer wants them, but they hear about Sunnyside daycare and how there are children there, and even when those children grow up, even many years from now, when those children go off to college, there will be a new batch of children to play with them. And so to the toys, this sounds like heaven. But the reality is not what they imagined. The kids in the room where they were placed, the two-year-old room, play with the toys like two-year-olds. And the toys immediately want to move to another room in the daycare and get less rough treatment. They are prevented from changing rooms by a teddy bear called Lotso Huggin' Bear. Lotso for short. We learned that Lotso was un once owned by a girl named Daisy and was lost on a family vacation. And when Lotso, as you know, these toys are able to walk and talk, uh, just not when humans are around. So if there's a human, they play dead. But when nobody else is around, they walk and talk. Lotso walked all the way back home and made it to Daisy's home and found out that he had been replaced. The experience made him bitter and angry. And uh, he took his anger out on the other toys, becoming a tyrant at Sunnyside Daycare, turning Sunnyside Daycare into essentially a toy prison. Lotso is an example of someone who doesn't deal well with change. He is someone who became bitter instead of better. I'll have a I have a friend, I'll call her Kelly, 
the when I tried to tell this story to myself over and over again, I kept saying, Kathy, that's not her name either. But uh, Kelly um, had this job. She had a middle kind of management responsibility in this corporation. And she had a boss who just seemed to have it in for her. Um, the boss just tried to... Je- uh, what's the word when you're trying to mess with somebody else's... Not Contaminate, yeah, sabotage, exactly. Cata- sabotage her work from from day one, it felt like. And she would complain about him, but say, you know what, I have friends in the, in the work group and I'll make it all work. And uh, then after several years of this kind of sabotage job, um, the boss up and made a, a requisition for a completely new position, an elimination of her position, which was vital to the company, and a completely new position which did not fit any of her skills. And, and he told her about this, that her job was being eliminated and this new job was being formed, and it was nothing personal, of course, he said, but she knew otherwise. She was encouraged to apply for this position, which really wasn't in her skill set, and instead she put in her two-week notice. She... Uh, looked for other jobs, tried to find other jobs because she couldn't get a good recommendation from her boss, had some struggles with that, uh, has worked at some jobs that bring in the money to pay for the bills, but really has never really gotten back up to that managerial position that she is highly qualified for um, since this moment and since this experience. And, And she... Frankly, it's hard to talk with her about this experience because she has not gotten over it. I try to talk to her about other things, and she keep it always. The conversation always circles back to this moment in her life, and it's now been five years. I've lost touch with her essentially, as as much as I've tried to keep the lines of communication open. Um, it's discouraging to keep talking about this five year ago incident. Uh, She lives in kind of a black cloud of anger and isolation because she hasn't gotten over it. It all started because of the insecurities of a boss who was intimidated by my friend's abilities and got rid of her because he couldn't stand having an employee who was more qualified and more competent than he. But she was the one who chose to not move on from her anger and instead live in her bitterness. We're all going to get hurt at some time or another. Some of us are hurt by our our employers. Some of us carry wounds from childhood. I have a colleague who uh, is struggling with dealing with his father's alcoholism. So his father uh, was alcoholic all of his uh, growing up years. And um, my colleague was noticing that he really, really tries to please people. He, want, he needs people's approval. Um, and I can identify with that a little. Um, that's why Facebook is so popular. <laughs> How many likes did I get? Um, sorry, am I the only one who's like that? Anybody else need more likes? Yeah, okay. Um, he, he says that he struggles with his need for approval. And... Um, he has gone to a therapist to identify that the fact that his father was so into his alcoholism that there was no way he could affirm anybody outside of himself, he was just medicating himself, um, that there was no way that this child growing up would get affirmation from this alcoholic father. He wasn't abused, he was simply neglected. And ever since then, he's been trying to get people to approve him and like him, especially male figures who have authority over him. And so... um, In his therapy uh, process, he's been going through a lot of um, processes, behavioral processes and others, but the one that really struck a chord was when he wrote a letter, his father is deceased, he wrote a letter to his father about all that his father did to him in his childhood and all the hurt he still carries today. And uh, my colleague shared with me um, about a month ago that that he wrote this multi-page letter and he read every word to his therapist as they both sat in the therapy room just weeping. My colleague still carries 
the scars of his childhood, but he is better off than he was even a month ago and no longer as bitter as he was about his father's treatment. He released his need to hold his father responsible for his feelings and behavior and forgave him. Now, forgiveness does not mean that you say what you did to me was okay because what his father did to him was not okay. But forgiveness means that you release that other person. You release your grudge against that person. It frees your need to have a different past. Forgiveness is letting go of the idea that the past can be changed. Letting go of your need for justice and revenge. Jesus says that we need to forgive. He said to his disciples, we need to forgive your disciples uh, not seven times, which is what the law, Jewish law was, but 70 times seven, which isn't meant to give you a mathematical number. It's mean, meant to say, don't count the number of times you forgive. Take the burden of that grudge off your shoulders again and again and again as much as you need to. Don't count. The, okay, this is, you're the eighth person. I can't forgive you because I've already forgiven seven times today. Today's scripture doesn't talk specifically about losing your job or letting go of your anger at your parents. But it does talk a lot about transitions. Transitions we all deal with. This passage in Ecclesiastes lists 28 different life circumstances, 14 pairs of events listed in sharp contrast to each other, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance. The writer of Ecclesiastes accepts these seasons as seasons that are set in motion by God. In reaction to the uncertainties of life, the writer advises, the best thing to do is be happy and enjoy yourself for as long as you can. This is good advice for those of us who have no control over many of life's events, but do have control over how we react to them. When life gives us trials, we can choose to come out the other end of those trials, bitter or better. Toy Story 3 leads us to think about transitions and how we handle them. Andy is moving off to college, leaving his toys behind. The toys who are mistakenly imprisoned in Sunnyside Daycare make a final attempt to leave the daycare through the trash chute. They are taken to an, a landfill and put on a conveyor belt headed for the incinerator. The toys are certain that they are facing death. And as they face that reality, they reach out to one another and hold each other's hands. As they face death, they gain comfort from their friends. Of course, this is a children's movie, and so they don't make it all the way to the incinerator. They escape being burned, and at the, and the end, make their way back to Andy's house. And Andy is inspired to give his toys to a neighbor girl uh, around the corner named Bonnie, who is the age that Andy was when he first got these toys. Andy, Andy introduces each of the toys to Bonnie, even introduces her to Woody, who is at the bottom of this box. Even though he intended to take Woody to college, he ends up introducing Bonnie to Woody and gives Woody to her, and she is thrilled. Transitions are a part of life. From that first step your baby takes to the walk we all take on that last journey from this life to the next, change is a part of life. As much as we dislike change, we often need to let go of something we have in order to get something better. You can't hang on to the past without losing what you would have in the future. By letting go of what you know is good for something you don't know is hard. But each new step you take in letting go often leads you to something better. 28 years ago, when Dave and I were attending prenatal classes for before the birth of our first child, 
our teacher was talking about the delivery room process and, and the birth of the baby. And then the teacher says, the doctor ties the cord and cuts it. And this is the first time your baby is ever separated from you. In order for parents to experience that rare moment when they first hold that tiny child with impossibly tiny fingers and impossibly tiny toes, the baby must in a very real way be separated from the mother. And from that moment on, the separations happen almost daily. All those things that our child le learns to do, the things that we brag about to our friends, are little tiny separations from us. All le lead to the goal of the child emerging as a separate individual with something to contribute to the world. Sometimes it's only by separation that is only by separation can we be given something that is better than what went before. All of us are mortal. Our lives do not go on forever. And yet, I cannot get away from the idea that the knowledge that our finit of our finitude is not to be, to be a threat, but a gift to encourage us to live each day to the fullest. In the end of this life, the only one we know will be taken from us. Why? So we can have something better. We call it eternal life. Beyond the door of death, in that world of light that we do not know and cannot imagine, there lies the greatest gift of all. When all else fails away, Jesus, our forever friend, will welcome us home to eternal life. And then for the first time when we make this transition, we will finally have something that is ours to keep. Thank you, O oh God, for being our friend. Thank you, Jesus, for being our forever friend. Thank you for the gift of eternal life that is ours to keep. Be with us in our transitions. Be with us in our struggles. Help us to let go of what was, of what was so that we can grab on to what is and what will be. Bless us, O oh God, as we struggle, as we let go as we learn to live.